What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. I know it's been a long time, but we're working on that. But today we got but I think it's like Germany and Elon Musk revealed their new tank. Something along those lines, I don't know yet. But make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow me on my social media and comment down below what you want to see next and all that good stuff. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. After the beginning of Russia's aggression against Ukraine, the whole world was roused. A host of countries immediately increased their military budgets. Germany was among the first. For the first time since 1945, the Bundestag decided to increase defense spending. And wherever there's big money, big business instantly becomes mobilized. The most agile and far-sighted businessman on the planet is considered to be Elon Musk. Recall his expansion into the space industry. SpaceX not only turned the space transportation market upside down, but also kicked Russia's Roscosmos out of it. At the same time, the U.S. budget only benefited since space flights became less expensive. A similar revolution in the car market was brought on with the arrival of Tesla. After having successfully entered the passenger car market, Elon Musk then took on the light trucking sector. It seems without a doubt that Elon Musk is a true revolution. See, now, I feel like he's more of for the future, he ain't for the modern technology and all that. Yeah, he might, years from now, he might have the biggest impact on the world with what everything he's done. That's, I'm, I, so I bet you he got the big, biggest impact on the motherfucker. He did. And so, Musk has not long ago taken on the task of creating a super tank like no other on the planet. This idea was prompted by Russia's aggression. The project to design the tank is being implemented jointly with the Defense Consortium from Germany. Such a pairing cannot help but make us picture the inevitable success of the project. Putin's army will be left with no chance of winning this war. Note that Elon Musk's technologies have already played a significant role in Russia's war against Ukraine. In the early days of Russian aggression, Musk provided Ukraine with his satellite internet system, and this really paid off. The fact is that almost all Viasat user terminals in Ukraine were disabled on the first day of aggression due to a Russian cyber attack. In some parts of Ukraine, Bro sent over. See, he might as well just be classified as an army because he could he could fix everything up. How are you just going to be... How, how are you making cars and shit and then you, you over here making shit for the military? Bro, pick one. Which one? You for us or for you the military? Which one? Because you little flip-flopping. Starlink remains the only means of communication with the outside world. Starlink systems help break through the information blockade. In addition, Starlink in Ukraine works to keep critical infrastructure personnel working at power plants and industrial enterprises. Starlink has also been used by the Ukrainian military. The Ukrainian armed forces recently began receiving kamikaze attack drones and reconnaissance drones from the United States. Communication and control of these UAVs is carried out through SpaceX's Starlink satellites. Thanks to them, the Ukrainian military remains connected and can control the operation of its UAVs and coordinate the actions of its units. There are currently more than 2,000 satellites in orbit. If Russia tries to destroy any satellites using anti-satellite missiles, we can put new ones into orbit faster than Russia can shoot them down, Musk revealed in a recent interview. Tanks have become the new object of interest for Musk. Their role in modern warfare can hardly be overstated. The real-world combat experience of using tanks in the Russian-Ukrainian confrontation shows that the tactics of their implementation needs to be revised. And wherever
whatever changes are on the horizon, Elon Musk is certain to appear with extraordinary solutions. Most likely, the German defense concern, Rheinmetall, will become Musk's partner in the new tank project. The concern recently introduced a concept fire support combat vehicle called the Lynx 120. It was originally assumed that this vehicle would be based on the chassis of the Lynx KF-41 infantry fighting vehicle, and that the combat module with new turret and 120mm smoothbore gun would be borrowed from the Leopard 2 tank. This gun will also be able to fire projectiles with a programmable detonation. The Lynx 120 will additionally include a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun and a machine gun on an unmanned turret. The Lynx 120 has a mass of 44 tons. In other words, it's a light tank. The experience of military operations in Ukraine shows that it is light tanks that gain advantage in a rapid troop advance. The fact is, it is roads which remain the main routes for the movement of troops. Yeah, but that'd be Heavy cool. tanks on public roads create many kilometers of traffic jams and become an easy target for aircraft, attack drones, and combat crews armed with Javelin and N-Law anti-tank systems, as well as Panzerfaust. There's no way. Couldn't go to war. No way. Because you not about to sit here and, like, be shooting missiles at me and try to blow me up. You not. No. No way. Grenade launchers. We have already revealed how the Ukrainian military skillfully employ these weapons. Take a look at the videos on our channel. The light tanks have armor that provides protection against medium caliber ammunition and shrapnel. Of course, this armor will not protect against Javelin and N-Law missiles or Panzerfaust grenades. Exactly why I'm not doing it. Because you, you protect me from bullets. You're not protecting me from missiles. I'd rather take a bullet before a missile. Come on now. Use your brain. However, heavy tanks with an armor thickness of 600 to 700 millimeters also do a poor job against such ammunition. The first month of the war in Ukraine showed that increasing armor level by just increasing the thickness of metal shows little promise. Against every type of armor, there is suitable ammunition. From this, we can conclude that a decrease to the thickness of the armor will also not have a significant effect on the survivability of the tank. However, increasing the speed and maneuverability of the vehicle by way of a smaller mass gives the crew a greater chance of coming out alive. We should also not forget about the you might be right about that because tanks are slow as hell. Like you, you, you. I don't know what, how you drive a tank, but you sitting in there and you driving this mug going slow. You dead. Let's get that bitch some get up. Let that bitch get up through. Damn, why you going so slow? Ain't the objective to get the fuck away, and we not getting the fuck away. Advanced active defenses of the tank. Such active protection systems include modern means of detecting missile launches operating using the ultraviolet range. The system warns the crew of the launch of a rocket or grenade towards the tank. As the ammunition approaches, the automatic system for setting the barrier is triggered. An aerosol cloud is sprayed in the path of the projectile, which cloaks the tank from the infrared and optical light range. There are also a means of optoelectronic suppression. Such a module is generally installed on the tank's turret. Included in such an active defense complex is a searchlight that emits radiation in the optical and infrared ranges. The range of these systems is 2 to 2.7 thousand. So you telling me you're going to try to fake out a goddamn missile with smoke? you just going to... When the missile going to just... And I hit the fucking tank? That bitch, once they lock in on your ass... It's already on your ass. It's over. You done for. You done. That and already locked in. It's coming your way now. Three, two, one. Boom! You done. To cross this distance, a javelin rocket takes 13 seconds or more. This is enough time for the active protection system to interfere with the operation of the optoelectronic ATGM guidance device. The rocket receives a false signal, causing it to either crash into the ground or fly past. However, the Rheinmetall concern has created even more advanced weapons that not only protect the tank, 
but also allow it to effectively attack sources of danger. UAVs and kamikaze drones have become a real scourge of tank columns. The new Skynex air defense system, also manufactured by the Rheinmetall Concern, will help protect against assaults from attack UAVs and kamikaze drones. The open architecture of Skynex allows the system to be placed on any moving platform, including Lynx 120 tanks. The heart of the Skynex system is the Orlikon Skymaster Command and Control System. Orlikon XTAR 3D radars operate by searching the X-band short-range frequencies. Lock on, tracking, classification, and identification of air targets all occur automatically. A three-dimensional picture of the sky is broadcast to the remote control node via the Skymaster network. The signal to destroy comes from the operator. The Skynet system can be armed with a 35mm MK3 cannon. Integration with the Cheetah rocket launcher is possible. One Skynex complex is capable of providing cover for an entire column of tanks, vehicles with personnel, and fuel tankers. Today, it is the most advanced system to come up against small air targets of minimal cross-section. These include not only UAVs, but also rockets and mortar shells. So, the Rheinmetall Concern created unique tank protection systems. What then could be the role of Elon Musk in this project? Most likely, his technologies in the field of electric propulsion systems will be indispensable. The advantages of using electric traction on ground military equipment are plain to see. Firstly, there is the that absence of shafts, gearboxes, and other units with rigid mechanical That's parts in the transmission. These units are usually heavy and require frequent maintenance. Hydraulic drives and gearboxes are the most vulnerable components. Without them, control of the tank is impossible. If a hydraulic failure occurs during a mission, the tank becomes a burden or an easy target. Secondly, without a transmission unit in the tank, the designers have more freedom in the layout of the vehicle. For example, you can increase the ammunition load and place it in the safest location, or equip the tank with additional weaponry. Thirdly, an electric tank is easier to control. The power plant has more torque, which means increased thoroughput and speed. Engine noise is minimal, which becomes an advantage when maximum concealment is required. Finally, an electric tank can serve as a source of energy for other machines and mechanisms. After all, the level of electrification of modern weapons is extremely high. Thermal imagers, communications equipment, radar stations, and other tactical devices require electricity. In a word, ground combat vehicles with electric transmission are superior to traditional models in terms of dynamics, maneuverability, ease of control, survivability, and security, as well as the possibility of attaching advanced weapons and sensors with high power consumption to them. For example, in the near future, laser weapons will become an integral part of ground combat vehicles. On a tank with an electronic transmission and batteries, there will be no difficulty in powering the laser system. The main source of energy for an electric tank can be a diesel or a gas turbine. Without a transmission load, the service life of such unit... I ain't gonna lie, man. All this shit sound complicated. So why? You intervening with the military and shit. You got another a motherfucking electric tank. You replacing all the shit with fucking satellites and every motherfucker thing. You doing this, you doing that. This nigga, we might not even be able to buy from this nigga. He might just be reserved for the fucking military. He might be a military access. Like, cause he's so smart. It's like, what, 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 what can't you do? You designing tanks. You giving them shit to be able to stay alive. You helping them win the war. What else? Like, you already rich. What, what, like, what you want? I don't understand, but like, I mean, I, I guess it's a good thing because he kind of helping him out in a way, you know what I mean? Like, he helping him out in a way, so I guess. Is much longer because the engine runs at constant even speed without big jumps. 
Increased loads during acceleration and vigorous maneuvering are compensated by batteries. Will Elon Musk be able to revolutionize the tank sector? We will be closely monitoring all future developments of this project. Alright, man. That was the end of the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow me on my social media. Comment down below what you want to see next. Now, I'm not the smartest motherfucker in the world, but in a way, I feel, I'm going to just say this. I feel like he helping out. He doing his part. And I do feel like he can revolutionize tanks because what he can bring to them and how he can flip them and make them way better. Now, one point is, he said an electric one would be way faster than a regular tank. So, that's a good point right there. Because, normally, I feel like speed in a war would be better than staying steady. 